We change the world every day in a hundred different ways. Hello, and welcome to Visions of the Past, an Assassin's Creed lore podcast. My name is Andrew, and I'm glad to see that you have found this podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the company that Warren Vidic was describing to Desmond Miles with this quote, Abstergo Industries. Abstergo has some kind of presence in every single installment of the Assassin's Creed series, be it a mention of the company, a person who has a tie to the company, or some project that they are spearheading. While there is no real-world company by that name, it does come from a real-world thought, as the word Abstergo is a Latin verb that means, I cleanse. Originally founded in 1937, Abstergo Industries was just one small part of a larger Templar scheme. This scheme started in 1910 by multiple Templar leaders of the time, which included Henry Ford and Ransom Oles, and it would be known as the Plan. It would combine economics, politics, and a military conflict as a means to make the world safe for Templar rule. Absurgo was created as a front for the Templars' activities, as a means for them to accumulate wealth and accelerate scientific process while being largely anonymous. During World War II, the company would remain quiet, but they would keep track of the progress made abroad by Templar puppets Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. In the United States, Abstergo, along with other Templar-controlled corporations, ceded rights to their workers and to their unions, but only as a means to tie the people closer to the Templar capitalist vision. By 1944, Abstergo and the Templars were prepared for the post-war era, and in July of 1944, they would organize the Brenton Woods Conference with the intent to spread capitalism throughout the world, but particularly within Europe. Following the war, Abstergo would control so much of the global economic and technological development that in 1948, they were able to eliminate former Templar and renowned economist Harry Dexter White, a high-ranking Templar in his own right, but also helped organize the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, but also someone who was passing information along to the Soviet Union. They would make White's murder appear like a heart attack. White would not be the only person that Abstergo would set their sights on for going against the plan. In a phone recording dating to June 1954, two Templars, only known as V and N, mentioned the need for Alan Turing to be killed as they feared mass employment if Turing was successful in developing robots. Originally, the Templars had Turing arrested in 1952 for gross indecency, but with that failed, they had him killed on July 7, 1954 making it appear as if he killed himself with a cyanide-laced apple, taking the care to make sure that his death was poetic, keeping with Turing's personality as he was always considered theatrical. Abstergo would also get involved in the 1953 Iranian coup d'etat, where the democratically elected Prime Minister Mohammad Mosaddegh was overthrown in favor of strengthening the monarchy of the Shah, Mohammad Pahlavi. Abstergo would be implicated in the 1954 overthrow of Guatemala's socialist president, Jacopo Arbenz Guzman. In both locations, Abstergo would work through the U.S. intelligence agency, the CIA. Not only did Abstergo work through the CIA, it was also paramount in the establishment and funding of NASA in 1958. The company would use NASA to produce new space-going technology, and when they became aware of an Apple of Eden on the moon, Abstergo would task NASA with working on a mission to land on the moon, and retrieve the apple. When U.S. President John F. Kennedy planned a joint lunar landing with the Soviet Union, the Templars behind Absurgo decided to put Kennedy's Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson in power, and in July of 1969, Templar agents Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon and retrieved the Apple of Eden. At this point, Absurgo would be firmly in control of the United States government and would continue interfering in other nations. Throughout the 1970s, they would focus on Argentina and Chile. In 1973, Absurgo would participate in a coup d'etat in Chile with the plans to open the markets up and force the sale of all public companies into the private sector. And in 1976, Absurgo would participate in a coup d'etat in Argentina by promising leading capitalists that they would pass their corporate debt to the Argentinian public in return for the support of the ruling junta and the elimination of the Argentinian trade unions. In both instances, the company would be able to hide its involvement and leave evidence that would implicate the U.S. government. In the final decades of the 20th century, Abstergo would emerge from the shadows as a powerful corporation, leading the way in the area of pharmaceuticals, though it would also engage in research in other fields, such as communications. 
1985, Abstergo's research division would secretly work on a device capable to imitate the mind-controlling aspects of the Apple of Eden, and in that same year, Abstergo developed its first fully functional Animus. In 1991, Abstergo would be back in the coup d'etat game, but this time in Russia by helping Boris Yeltsin to overthrow Mikhail Gorbachev. Yeltsin would introduce the privatization of the massive state-owned industries, and as such, these industries were quickly taken over by oligarchs, and by 1993, Yeltsin would disband the Russian parliament and the constitutional court. After almost 80 years of fighting communism, Abstergo and the Templars eliminated the largest obstacle to the global spread of capitalism. As a failsafe, Abstergo would then make sure that the future leader, Vladimir Putin, would continue to push for capitalism, just like Yeltsin had. At the end of the 20th century, Daniel Cross had infiltrated the Assassin Order as a sleeper agent and killed their mentor. After returning to an Abstergo facility in Philadelphia, Daniel would provide the location of Templar training camps across the world. This would start the global elimination of the Assassins and what they would call the Great Purge. In 2000, Templar puppet and Justice of the Supreme Court Anton Celia would convince Sandra Day O'Connor to retire and later would send a letter where he mentioned that the president would start the Iraq war and from there the Supreme Court could dissolve standing campaign finance laws that would allow Abstergo to effectively place anyone it wanted within the US government. By 2011, Abstergo had its communications division use closed circuit television to spy on civilians. In April of that year, it would be accidentally discovered by Mr. Jamison between channels 172 and 173. This channel would have the names of his family, their credit card numbers, medical information, and personal preferences. After calling the cable company Comtastic, Abstergo would send a few agents to his home and end the lives of Mr. Jamison and his son Paul. In January 2012, the CEO of Abstergo Industries would pass and would leave a message for his successor, Alan Ricken, to stay the course because if the free market failed, the civilian populace would turn against capitalism and Abstergo. Later that year, Abstergo would suffer a major setback to their I Abstergo project when an incident under the Denver International Airport led to the destruction of one of the Apples of Eden in their possession. In September, though, Abstergo's Animus project would offset the catastrophe when the Lineage Discovery and Acquisition Department captured Desmond Miles. While he would eventually escape, he would provide them with a holographic map that detailed many locations to other pieces of Eden. Templar agents, along with Daniel Cross, would hunt for Desmond and the de facto leader of the organization, his father, William. Failing across the globe for almost four months, they would eventually catch a break on December 12, 2012, when Juhani Otzoberg caught up with William Miles at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo while he was trying to steal a power source for the Grand Temple. Two days later, Desmond would arrive at Abstergo's Rome facility, where he would rescue his father and kill both Daniel Cross and Warren Vidic, two high-ranking Templars. After these deaths, Abstergo would cancel the I Abstergo launch because they didn't have a piece of Eden to go inside it. Not much is known of the overall corporate runnings after the failure that was I Abstergo outside the death of Alan Ricken on December 14, 2016. But there were numerous divisions and subsidiaries of Abstergo Industries that were active, including the historical research division that was responsible for researching and documenting historical events. Currently, it is headed by Simon Hathaway, who has been in the position since the death of Isabel Ardant in 2015. Lineage Discovery and Acquisition is responsible for locating and acquiring people whose ancestry were of interest to Abstergo. This is, of course, the department that was responsible for finding Desmond Miles. The director of research as of March 2017 was Mitsoku Nakamura. The Future Technology Department is Abstergo's technology research and development branch. While not known who runs it, Alan Ricken's daughter Sophia was active in the division in 2006 when she recruited Leila Hassan from the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences at Berkeley University. Abstergo Pharmaceuticals was the main face of Abstergo by 2012 and they would produce medicines for things such as cancer and diabetes. Abstergo Fitness developed products and programs that were meant to emphasize excellent health. They would produce things such as the Hearn Plus line of energy supplements and food replacements, the Anglius implant that used nanotech to monitor and communicate a child's state 
to a paired wristband that was based off of their body band portable fitness tracker. Mysore Tech was founded by Ajay Rana and in 2013 was assigned with the distribution of the portable Animus console titled Brahmin VR throughout India. Abstergo Entertainment creates movies and video games from genetic memories. The first major release was 2012's Liberation. Currently, Abstergo Entertainment is overseen by their CEO, Melanie LeMay, who took the position after the disappearance of her predecessor, Olivier Garneau, in late 2013. Abstergo Financial Group focuses on economic services that help both consumers and corporations manage their money. This would include multiple financial institutions, like the Malta Blanking Corporation. Abstergo Financial's current CEO is Agneta Ryder, and the Abstergo Foundation, which was founded with the goal to find a genetic cure to violence. It was headed up by Dr. Sophia Ricken until the foundation's subjects escaped in 2016. I have always seen Abstergo Industries as an analog for today's mega corporations, such as Google, Disney, Time Warner, and others. These big companies that have so many others beneath them that they end up doing so many different things, they end up having a lot of power within themselves. While Abstergo is fictional, you can definitely see the parallels. The idea as them being the big bad allows us as a consumer to be pulled into this world and get a feel for it without knowing the history of the company. We know just by the feeling it gives us that something isn't always right with what they are doing or what they are saying that there is always something hidden behind the scenes. It's from that standpoint that I like them as an entity and with their place in the story. They're that group you love to hate and it has a few employees that don't know what's going on above or below them and that you can empathize with. So many different stories within the whole they give them a broad reach and a massive appeal and the reason why they will continue to be featured within Assassin's Creed stories in some form or fashion. Thank you for joining me today. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast. And if you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you would like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter at visions underscore AC, a link to which will be in the description of this podcast. I also wanted to let you know that tomorrow there will be an extra special episode where I sit down with Let's Talk Assassin's Creed's Declan Rose, where we sit and we talk about the Viking Age, what it could mean for the upcoming game, and where we could possibly go with the story of the next Assassin's Creed. But until next time, my Assassin friends, make sure to follow the Creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.